Hello, welcome to Fundamentals of Acoustics. Today is the last day of uh, this particular week, which is the fifth week of this course. And what we plan to do today is continue the discussion which we initiated yesterday. And what we will specifically start today's lecture is by developing a relationship between P plus and U plus. And once we are able to develop that relationship, then we will compute the impedance of a spherically symmetric outward traveling wave. So, in uh, when we were doing one dimensional waves moving in Cartesian frame of reference that is planar waves, we had used uh, the Newton's second law that is the momentum equation to connect pressure and velocity. So, we will use similar relation, but which is applicable for spherical systems to develop the pressure velocity relationship. So, the momentum equation for 1D spherical so momentum equation for a spherical system or a spherical reference frame and of 1D variety is, so what is it? It says that partial derivative of pressure with respect to radius is equal to minus rho naught del u over del t. So, we look at equation 1, this is the equation for pressure, equation 2 is the equation for velocity. We plug equation 1 and 2 in I call this equation A and we equate them. Okay. So, what does it mean? It says, so once I do that, my uh, expression is partial derivative with respect to radius of the pressure. So, pressure is P plus over R e to the power of j omega t minus R c hmm, is equal to minus rho times partial of u with respect to t and u is u plus over r e to the power of j omega t minus r over c. So, this is what uh, the terms are on both sides. So, we do the differentiation on both sides. So, on the LHS I get so, P plus is a constant, even it may be complex, but it is constant. So, I get P plus over R and first I differentiate the exponential P plus, huh? P plus. P plus. and if I differentiate the exponential, I get J omega R over C and there is a negative sign E J omega T e minus j omega r over c. Okay. So, I have just differentiated the exponential part. Now, I will differentiate the part related to 1 over r. So, I get another term minus p plus over r square e j omega t e minus j omega r over c. This is equal to negative of, so I am going to write this in the next line, negative of rho naught 
and here I am going to differentiate this with respect to time. So, I get j omega u plus e j omega t e minus j omega r over c ok and there is a r in the denominator. So, this negative sign from the both sides it gets cancelled out. So, this becomes plus this becomes plus and so does this. The other thing we note is E j omega t it gets cancelled out. I can also cancel out E minus j omega r c, but I will not do that because it serves a very useful purpose. So, the next thing is that this term is defined as u of r omega complex amplitude of r omega. Okay. So, it is u plus divided by r times e minus j omega r c. Similarly, this multiple is p of r omega and so I can rewrite this entire equation as p of r omega and then here I get j omega r over c plus 1 over r because here also I have p of r and omega. Hmm? So, this is equal to rho naught j omega u of r omega okay. and remember that these waves are travelling in the outward direction and there are no reflected components. So, I will also add a positive sign here. Okay. So, this is the complex amplitude which varies with r which, with, with, uh, which varies with r and it is just travelling in the outward direction. So, I have put a positive sign if there was also a reflected component then I would not be doing this. Okay. So, that is uh, there. Okay. So, I put a positive sign here also. So, p plus r omega over u plus r omega equals 1 j omega c no j omega r divided by c. and then there is a rho here and also an omega. So, p plus so I get rho naught j omega. Okay. And if I rearrange these terms I can write this entire thing as 1 over. So, if I divide the numerator and denominator by rho j omega I get in the numerator just 1 and here I get 1 over rho naught c plus 1 over j omega rho naught r or another way to express the same thing is rho naught c j omega r divided by c plus j omega r. Okay. So, this is an important relation. 
So, very important relation and what this means is so that the complex amplitude of the pressure wave and the complex amplitude of the velocity wave their proportion is this complicated function and this function changes with r it changes with r it is important to understand I am missing some r somewhere then you are saying here r should be there no no it should not be there I am missing otherwise there will be a problem where did I do a mistake कहाँ पर? हाँ, this R should not be there, ना? Okay. So if this R is not there, J omega by C, then this R will not be there, ना? हाँ? Okay. तो हम लोग भी ले start टके ना ना? शुरू कर दीजिए. So while doing this differentiation, there was a small error which I committed. So, this r should not be there. Uh, okay. So, it should be just j omega over c and if this r is not there, then it also goes away from here and it also goes away from here. Oops. And it is then that I get this expression var over rho naught c. Okay. So, so now earlier in one of our earlier classes we had defined a specific acoustic impedance and what was this? This was complex pressure amplitude. divided by complex velocity amplitude okay. and this was definition was for a planar wave travelling in one direction in just x direction and this complex pressure amplitude has both reflected as well as forward travelling components. Now in the spherical wave there is no reflected, uh, uh, reflected component at least in this case which we have developed. So for outgoing outward travelling spherical waves z or a specific acoustic impedance. So, this is z uh, and this varies with x and omega z which is a function of x and omega. So, not x for spherical waves it is r and omega this function can be expressed as p plus of r and omega divided by u plus of r and omega complex pressure amplitude and complex velocity amplitude this ratio and this ratio is equal to 1 over 1 by rho naught c plus 1 over j omega rho naught r. Okay. This is a very important relation. <coughs> now, now just look at consider a spherical wave. So, this is my source and I am at a distance here some point p which is r and time t away. Hmm. So, as wave travels from here to here, the ratio of complex amplitudes of pressure and u is going to be like this okay. and then we will make some important observations. First observation, as r goes to infinity, this term 
1 over j omega rho naught r inverse of this this term term so this thing it goes to 0 which means that z approaches rho naught c and what is rho naught c it is z naught which is characteristic impedance of medium ok. So, it becomes so z which is the specific acoustic impedance which varies with r it approaches rho naught c which is the characteristic impedance. So, this is one important observation. Second thing, second thing when r is not large, when r is not large what happens? P plus r omega and u plus r omega they are off in phase because their ratio is a complex number the ratio of these two things is a complex function because there is this j term ok. But as r becomes large as r approaches infinity then p plus r omega and u plus r omega become close in phase they become close in phase ok this is important. What this means is 1 and 2 collectively they say that as I go away from a spherically symmetric source in the wave when it is far away from the spherical source it behaves as a planar wave because in planar wave where there is no reflection see here there is no reflection when there is no reflection in planar waves if you look at the complex pressure amplitude and complex velocity amplitude there is no phase difference that is one thing and the characteristic impedance and z is same. So, as r becomes very large spherical waves start becoming planar waves and physically also it makes sense because the radius of curvature of these waves is so large that they are almost just travelling in a Cartesian kind of a fashion in just one specific direction ok. So, this is uh, important to understand. The third thing, so the third observation is what is P of x P plus of r omega what is this? We have defined it as P plus over r e minus j omega r over c ok and the actual pressure is equal to P plus r omega times E j omega t. If I take its real thing then I get the actual pressure. Now, P plus decays in 1 over r fashion. Why? Because of this term 1 over r right which means that as I move away from the source the pressure which I microphone will sense it will fall in 1 over r fashion. So, if I go 10 times away from the source the pressure is going to go down by a factor of 10. So, pressure decays in 1 over r fashion. Similarly, u of r t also decays in 1 over r 
passion. So both pressure, velocity and pressure they fall following this 1 over r rule. So these are three important observations which we have to understand as we are dealing with spherical waves which are traveling just outwards. First is that their phase difference between the pressure and velocity is not 0. In one dimensional forward traveling wave it is exactly 0. So this is one important difference. Second thing is as you move away from the source the pressure keeps on going down and so is the velocity. So this is the second difference and the third difference is that when become r becomes very large spherical waves start behaving as uh, planar waves. So this concludes our discussion for today and for the week we will continue this discussion in the next week also till then have a great weekend and uh, bye.